Good evening and welcome viewers. So tomorrow the election commission will announce the dates for the general election of 2024 and that announcement will be in a press conference at 3 o'clock. So by roughly 4 o'clock, 4.30, we'll know the dates when your part of the country will go through general elections, when you will be voting in the next election. And as you all know, this is part of a process last time also. Uh, the election dates were announced around the 10th of March 2020, uh, 2019 and the new government was sworn in by the end of May in 2019. This time it's about five days later, very much on time. The new Lok Sabha has to be constituted as per the rules. The term of the present Lok Sabha ends on the 16th of June and therefore a new house has to be constituted before that. So everything is on track. Ladies and gentlemen, what is not on track is the preparation of the opposition. This is a very one-sided election, whichever way you want to look at it. And it's not a question of uh, giving it a spin. The fact is that the opposition this time seems totally lost and totally underprepared. It is clutching for straws. It is having its Chokidar Chorhe moment. It is looking for support from certain sections of the media. Certain people who call themselves public intellectuals are giving them moral support. But increasingly, even among those people who are the core base of the anti-BJP group, they are coming to the conclusion that this election is a lost election for them. Firstly, there is no unity in the opposition. We are one month away. There has not been one single joint opposition rally, I repeat. There has not been one single joint opposition rally. One. Two, the alliances had dwindled. They were trying to bring together an alliance, then the JDU left the India alliance, the TMC ditched the India alliance. There is no clear status on the situation between the Maharashtra partners. And you've seen what happened in Kerala where the CPIM is fielding a candidate against Rahul Gandhi. Now, what remains? What remains, viewers, is whether the BJP can cross the 50% mark. Now, that will require a 10% swing. Is a 10% swing possible? Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. But not impossible. Now, when was the last time any party in our country got about a 50% of the vote? I think if I'm not mistaken, it was around 1984, where after Indira Gandhi's assassination, there was a sympathy vote. And the Congress had climbed to about 40, 48, 47, 48%. The Prime Minister sets a target of 370. If 370 is what the BJP needs to get, then it has to fight for somewhere close to 45 to 50% of the vote share. That means the Prime Minister is looking for a 6 to 7%, 8% swing in favour of the BJP in this election. Is there, a, is there a tsunami towards that? Is there a psychological momentum towards that? Is there a sentiment towards that? It's difficult to say. There isn't any X-factor moment this time. But having said that, the BJP is within reach. And why am I saying so? I think the BJP is within reach of 370 for three or, three or four basic reasons. One, remember viewers, that the BJP was a runner-up in 72 seats. It finished third on 31 seats. It won 309 seats on its own. And on top of that, it was second or third, which means it was very much in the fight in 103 seats. Now, if you look at the 133 seats, where the BJP lost last time, out of those in 72 seats, BJP came second. Out of the 72 seats where the BJP came second, 22 were in Bengal. In these 22 seats, there are 12 seats in Bengal alone where the BJP lost with a margin of less than 10%. This very much indicates that if the BJP works very hard, picks up the momentum in Bengal, then it can really try and work things around and take its tally beyond 25-26 easily in Bengal. Then there is Odisha. In Odisha, there are 11 seats where the BJP came second. Out of these, there are four seats where the BJP came a close second. And if the BJP works hard, it can increase its tally there. And finally, viewers, I am also betting on Tamil Nadu, though the alliance has not been announced there. But there are five seats in Tamil Nadu where the BJP came second. If the BJP goes all out in Tamil Nadu, will it be able to convert these five seats into victorious seats or at least get three seats there? <laughs> Viewers, we can keep looking at the number. Bottom line is, 
there is no united opposition the opposition is unprepared and the prime minister is putting everything possible like never before into this particular election if you look at the way he's traveled over the last 100 days he's made four visits to rajasthan alone five to gujarat seven to uttar pradesh five visits to tamil nadu he has been to jammu and kashmir twice he's been to bihar twice and bengal three times do you get a sense of what is electoral strategy he's been to assam twice do you see a sense of where his electoral strategy is he is going all out and ladies and gentlemen therefore this means it's a pure and pure and pure and pure modi referendum election i call this the election which is the modi referendum election it's purely a referendum on prime minister narendra modi that's how i look at it i come to you with two debates tonight there have been interesting developments first of all the the first three debates tonight the first is of course about the imminent excitement about the announcement of the election dates tomorrow and how things are how things are placed and how things are panning out before that at 10 o'clock this evening viewers the arrest of k kavita uh picked up from her house and brought to delhi now who's next could it be kejriwal and debate 3 this evening uh the supreme court says it will hear the question of an interim stay on ca on uh, on tuesday my own bet is that the it will not entertain any stay on the ca uh i don't think the supreme court will get into policy decisions of the government but we'll have to see that's the third debate and here are the headlines this friday evening ladies and gentlemen on the debate tonight election dates are to be announced tomorrow 3 pm is the press conference of the election commission in which the exact dates phases of voting will be announced KCR's daughter K Kavita arrested by the enforcement directorate in connection to the liquor gate probe <coughs> After mega searches high drama and a big arrest K Kavita is flown into the national capital BJP firefights rebellion in Karnataka Ishwarappa says will contest elections as an independent Supreme Court to hear please challenging the citizenship law on Tuesday all eyes are on the big hearing and the Supreme Court pulls up the SBI once again for not sharing complete data on electoral bonds ask for unique numbers linked to bonds to be put out So the moment is finally here tomorrow at three o'clock. The election commission holds a huge press conference, and that press conference starts the build-up to the biggest news event once every five years. The biggest news event by far, a thousand times bigger than any event, ladies and gentlemen. The general elections of India, and this time the announcement is at three o'clock. We expect elections to start somewhere on mid 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 April and carry on till roughly. a uh, second week of may but we'll have to see uh everything is very much on track that's live coverage for that tomorrow in the run up to that as i repeat once again there is complete confusion disunity disharmony and a lack of any cohesion within the opposition this is an election which i call the modi referendum election let's debate Party! The battleground is set for the 2024 grand finale. Ab Kerala ke log bhi keh rahe hain ab ki baar 400 par. Ab ki baar itna mana nanorila digam. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari 
Prime Minister Modi has spearheaded BJP's mega Vixit Bharat push by holding 52 rallies in the last 100 days. One cannot miss Prime Minister's historic temple visits, back-to-back -back rallies in southern states, all this even as BJP seeks to make inroads in the south. मुझे अपना बांधते हैं, अपने परिवार के सदस्य की तरह मुझे प्यार करते हैं, और इसलिए मैं कहता हूँ, 140 करोड़ देशवासी यही मेरा परिवार है। With Chandra Babu Naidu, Nitish Kumar, and Naveen Patnaik joining the NDA, BJP-led bloc seems to be clear favourites in the polls. आप फिर पधारे हैं यहाँ ताज हम लोगों को बड़ी खुशी की बात है आप पहले आए थे इधर हम गायब हो गए थे तब हम फिर आपके साथ हैं हम आपको आश्वस्त करते हैं कि अब इधर उधर होने वाले नहीं हैं हम रहेंगे आप ही के साथ इसलिए अगर आप तेजी से यहाँ वाला काम सब हो जाए The Indy on the other hand is still struggling to keep its block united. The seat-sharing formula is yet to be chalked out by the Mahagadi in Maharashtra. With the RLD and TMC deserting Indy and left in the crosshairs of the Congress in Kerala, the opposition seems to be in a disarray. Here, LDF, UDF, both of them are showing up to fight. लेकिन दिल्ली जाकर एक दूसरे को गले मिल जाते हैं कांग्रेस और लेप इन दोनों ने ही केरला को खूब ठगा है। As the election commission announces the poll dates tomorrow, can the Indy catch up with NDA's game plan? Let's debate. Former Member of Parliament, Senior Journalist, Columnist uh, Swapan Das Gupta is with us tonight uh, to set up debate number one this evening. Swapan Das, dates tomorrow, uh, every election, every general election generally revolves around one theme. What is the theme in your view for the 2024 general election, the overriding theme? Well, the first thing is that, I, I mean, I'm talking about the pure administration of the election. I think, you know, it's worth complimenting the election commission for me getting the elections better and better over the years. Now, yes, there are certain issues which are still there. I think West Bengal is one of the issues which is still nagging everybody's, uh, which is irritating everybody. But overall, we are seeing a free and fair election, a competitive election, a well-administered election and an ad election which is governed by rules. And I think that's, firstly, we must complement the Election Commission for getting it that, regardless of whether they do do it in five phases, six phases or eight phases. That's the first thing, I think. And, and uh, Swapanda, you, are you, do you find it interesting there's no EVM build up to an EVM complaint this time from the opposition? <laughs> there will be, or, or no, don't fear that, don't fear that. You know, there's a habit in India of the losers always saying that it's been manipulated. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely Indian tradition whereby the EVMs come under scrutiny. But I think the EVMs are robust and the reason why they are so good and they're so credible is because they are very simple. They are not connected with the internet. Had they been connected with the internet, yes, we could have been talking about how satellites can influence the manner in which the outcome is de de determined. No. What is, of course, necessary to be uh, screened a little more and a scrutiny has to be done very, very carefully is to make sure that 
the results as they come out of the EVM machines are actually noted correctly. By which I mean that if, for instance, party X gets 100 votes and a party Y gets 20 votes, make sure that at the time when you're tabulating it, the, the order is not reversed. I have seen that happening in quite a lot number of places in the past. Uh, you think that this is the most personality-centric election in the history of independent India? As in a well, referendum all, all, on the ele all elections have been personality-centric in this way. What is different from this election, say, compared to uh, the election of 1971, which I still remember as a schoolboy, or some other election, is that the you see, the mass media covers it so thoroughly and there's a sort of sense of carpet bombing over a, over a particular candidate, over a particular leader. So Mr. Modi, I think, dominates this election far more than anyone else has been, thanks to the adept use of technology. But more than that, I think what's very important is that there are multiple messages. Mr. Modi's appeal is not based on one thing. It's based particularly on performance. And I think that's a big, big shift that there are, you can take about five or six issues. You, you can take a bouquet of things and say, look, I like Modi because of Ram Mandir. I like Modi because of the manner in which the economy is there. I like Mr. Modi because he's made India strong. I like Mr. Modi for something else. I like Modi, Mr. Modi for his welfare program. So you have a you, you can actually pick from various things. And that's what makes this election very interesting, that Mr. Modi is today appealing to a multiple uh, to multiple sections based on performance. He always used to say, judge me by my report card. And I think he's given a report card where he's got A's in, you know, multiple subjects. But is this, is this, I mean, what would be, what, I mean, both issues are important, the ideological base of the BJP, the ideological leaning of BJP supporters with so many people outside the BJP joining the BJP. Has that got diluted somewhat? Well, you know, there are a lot of, you know, some BJP people, of course, undeniably have said, look, these people are joining, their their track record is not particularly good. And, you know, some, the, the, their sort of moral uh, integrity quotient is a bit low, etc. Now, I think one of the reasons why they're doing it is to make sure that today you're trying to build an election. You're trying to build an election campaign where you've set an exacting target. And I think one of the problems, one of the issues why it's there is that if, if you've set a target, that you're going to get 400 seats as your target, then you have to mop up everything in there. Mr. Amit Shah once spoke, uh, to, uh, said that, you know, the target in every constituency has to be 50% of the popular vote because anything less than the others, you, you can have the uh, other others things about alliances, etc., etc. But to achieve that 50%, you have to also give importance to those 5% here, 3% here, that sort of thing. So uh, it is a... It's a strategy which does not always appeal to the ideologically pure, but it's a strategy based on ruthless calculation. But 50% has not I happened ever. Know, but 50% has never happened in our country. Is, Even it's, in 1984, it's, Congress got 48%. You know, 50% is such a, you know, it's such a uh, impossible target. In the 50s, it used to be said that you can't conquer Everest. And today, you're actually trying to, con uh, to, to climb, to reach the peak of the electoral Mount Everest. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge challenge. And without a war, without something, you're doing it in normal peacetime. So between now, Swapanda, you know, always the BJP plays the you know, the slog overs very well. Uh, what do you expect the BJP strategy to change? Say, between, they always have something, you know, probably they've not announced, always seem, they always seem very blasé about the last run up saying we've done good work. We don't need to do anything uh, massively euphoric or excitable towards the very end. But my question to you is, 
Do you think the BJP will pull something out between now and, uh, say, first week of May? You or see, do they need to? At, uh, if you look at the Prime Minister, manner in which the Prime Minister has fought elections, whether in Gujarat or in, 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 uh, as Prime Minister, both, both as Chief Minister and as Prime Minister, you'll find one thing. That first, there is the emphasis, there is the uh, uh, saturation coverage of as many constituencies as possible, where he talks in particular about his performance, particularly his performance and track record, what the government has achieved. And he's done that. Then comes another point, the, the next and the final stage of it, when something a little more emotive comes up. And the reason why this emotive thing is done is basically to motivate the committed, the carders, to come out and give their best. And I see that. So when you're talking about, will he pull something, will he get a new sort of rabbit out of the hat? Yes, of course, I believe that there will happen. And especially in the... Say the final phase of the election, you're likely to see something which will actually motivate the committed BJP voters to give their best. Otherwise, the danger of complacency, the danger of saying, Are, oh, to jeet to gya hai, as you're saying, because this time the opposition to, to the BJP is not that formidable. The, uh, the India alliance has not really taken off. And there is there is a certain sense of uh, there is a foregoneness to this entire election at one time. So under the circumstances, you need to motivate people to get to, to that four hundred plus. So last time the BJP got three hundred nine on its own. What's your assessment this time? Your assessment, your assessment, not the BJP. Well, I mean, you know, Arnav, I was li listening to your uh, assessment uh, before the uh, yes. before yes. started the, this segment, and you quite clearly pointed out that there are twenty seats in the east which are there in uh, for the BJP to pick up, yes. and then that's sort of taking into account northeast, Assam, uh, Orissa, West Bengal. That's twenty seats. Now, if there are on top of that. If about 10 to 15 seats can be added in from the south, 10 seats, you know, it'll be a huge, spectacular achievement. You know, it, 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 it's a, in, in terms of its importance, it's it, it's going to be phenomenal. Now, uh, and the point of maximizing whatever is there in your str strongholds, you know, the, there are uh, opinion polls uh, of you know, varying credibility. But all of them say one thing, that the BJP is on the verge of maximizing its strength almost in its strongholds and making big inroads there. So I'm not going to get, to get into numbers. All I can say is that in the first week of the campaigning, if you see that sort of, you know, sometimes the extent of support or antipathy, as the case may be, uh, for a particular cause is not immediately apparent. But once the campaign starts, once the candidates are announced, and if you see that momentum building up steadily, then you'll know that, yes, they are somewhere within smelling distance of that, uh, you know, so-called impossible target of 400 seats. I think so. So, you know, I, I find the Prime Minister's very sort of uh, calm observation where he said, people ask me, how do I uh, turn things into successes? And he said that because I have, I don't remember the exact Hindi, but it was translated into, I have the ability to anticipate the future. And obviously, the Prime Minister has anticipated something as a political observer, which is why he stuck his neck out to 370. He didn't do so. Prime Minister has not, has not ever become a number predictor in any election so far that I've seen at the national level. First time he's done yeah, it, he so that's why... But I, I think to be an example of West Bengal, where I've seen him, you know, sort of come in and West Bengal, where the morale of the BJP was at its lowest after the 2021 elections, because not least because of the post-poll violence, how the mood gradually has been, you know, been lifted. And Amit Shah first came in and said, we need 35 seats out of the 42. That's our yeah. target. But Modi ji yeah. came in, the Prime Minister came in and said, we are there in the contest in all 42 seats. Now, whether you're in the contest in all 42 seats or not, what it basically means is that you're going to give your best. And 
what's interesting this time is that you're likely to get support. You know, you, you, you've you broken all those caste barriers, you've broken all those demographic barriers, quite a lot of things. There are some issues which still remain, but by and large, those caste and social barriers are there. You're getting the support of people from all classes, from all, nearly all castes. And on top of that, if certain sections come and vote for you, in multi, in in with a great deal of enthusiasm, and I'm talking about basically the youth and women. Then, on top of that, you get the beneficiaries of the welfare pro programs complementing it. Then I think you know we could uh, see some spectacular results. You know the type of which we probably haven't seen for a very very long time. And eighty four was you know in in some cases yeah. nineteen eighty four we saw spectacular results in large parts of India. This time, yeah. we may see similar sort of things. Okay, we're keeping watch on that. Swapandas Gupta was setting this up beautifully once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You've got to be with me on Counting Day, by the way, Swapanda. Come what may. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Tuhin Sinha is with us. I can see Mr. Savarwal of the Congress Party with us. Uh, and we have, of course... Rina Gupta of the Ahmadmi Party, Arko Kumar Nag, uh, Baxti, TMC, and uh, welcome all of you. So, uh, dates tomorrow. Uh, Rina, first thoughts from you, dates tomorrow. And I have been saying this for a while that the opposition had an opportunity to put things together. But dates are out tomorrow, not one single rally together. You have an alliance in Delhi, but at a national level, the India alliance is not looking good. Is looking increasingly one way, and this is being seen as a Modi referendum election. Uh, you know, not how you would have liked things to be six months back. Can't hear you. I, can you unmute yourself, please, Rina? Hello? Yeah, I, I can you yeah, hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, now loud and clear. Yes. Adna, what I was saying was that why do you keep saying it's a referendum on Mr. Modi? Agar Modi ji ke naam pe hi vote padne the, to Delhi ke sare candidates kyon badalne pade? Agar aapko Pradhan Mantri ke chehre pe vote milega, to inke bade bade digga jo hain. Jain Sina, Minakshi Lekhi, Nitin Patel. Why are all of these guys scared from contesting the election? Today, the biggest issue is that the... Mm. No, no, it's from your end. I, I'm having a problem of your audio. Just one minute. Is the audio through, Aditi? Can I be given instructions? I'm not getting your audio in. I'll let Mr. Sabarwal take that. Can we fix the audio a second time? Please, please. Rina, can you check if you're not muted? We'll check with your live view unit also. But I'll give that to Mr. Sabarwal till then. Uh, Rina, sorry to stop your flow, Mr. Yeah. Sabarwal. Uh, I can hear you now. Please continue, Rina. Yes. Aditi, she, I could just hear her say, speak to me. So can she speak, continue to speak? Rina, can you say something, please? Okay, Mr. Sabarwal, please continue. Please continue. Mr. Sabarwal, sorry. Uh, good evening, Arnab, uh, to all your viewers also. Uh, Rina was telling that uh, the... BJP has replaced candidates in Delhi. BJP is only doing one thing. They are breaking the people from our party. They are taking them with the help of the agencies. And they are giving the tickets to them. All ex-congressmen are getting tickets in BJP. So this kind of performance they have got because they are so much, they have no, their cadre is not with them. They have no candidates. They have no, not done any work. 
this is this is only a myth they have created now the the ball is not because the downfall of their started you know the election commissioner has resigned the electoral bonds has totally exposed the most mr modi's agenda totally bogus i think in the whole in the country like india it has never happened since last 75 years of the independence the corruption level mr modi is totally exposed totally bogus leader he is totally people are talking on the roads totally corruption electoral bonds is the biggest scam which this government has done they have cheated each of us each indian have been cheated by his only jumlas only good speeches he can give nothing more he can perform he doesn't know how to perform he is not fit to remain the prime minister he must resign today itself because the way in which the supreme court has openly exposed his total scam but, but mr sabarwal part on the front on the on the part of mr modi but, and bjp but mr sabarwal why don't you why don't you announce rahul gandhi from amethi first we'll announce definitely i am mean, instead of talking such There things out okay, why don't you announce priyanka two, gandhi from raipur i respect you too much you know you are not well Since, again you are not well i've been told that and still you are debating for your viewers on the national on your channel i am proud of you but your name is arnab when you call me indi i give me a pain i am india alliance the indian national development inclusive alliance don't call us with our don't call us indi indi this is this hurts us how you can change our name himself, my parents name cannot be changed my name cannot be changed india hindustan bharat cannot be changed arnab goswami is arnab goswami republic tv is republic tv rahul gandhi is mr rahul gandhi it isn't it laughable this alliance has been in place for more than one year and till now they haven't done a single public meeting for one year this whole alliance has been put in place and they have met only six times we did we did shocking doesn't it show the state Why of affairs that the opposition is finding itself you, at least in the 2019 the there was a slogan the people of right? india the people of india only. the people of india no, people of our country people of our country will tell you sir the better please, line sir i was hearing you for the past several minutes please pause hold for wait for two months hold your enthusiasm months. for getting zero Sita. seats in entire north india started. why are you so enthusiastic sir your enthusiasm is matched by the, the india alliance people the better day. bring out the electoral bonds issue right you now. people you are only given given ticket to ex congress men in delhi you have given to ram sharma bhaduri right now ex congress men important parts have to be removed you need Asrut people Are to fill in the rank and file. We have the created Bangladesh. The problem with the opposition there is, is you have zero credibility no left. Media. You there have zero no issues left. You, you have zero no messages left. You have no agenda. You have no agenda. You don't have a leadership. You don't have a leadership. She has divided with me. You can't even see eye to eye to each other. Wherever Rahul Gandhi goes, the alliances are broken. I don't. I don't. One moment. The election dates are tomorrow. You see what Rahul Gandhi is doing. The election. The election dates are tomorrow. The ground level. The 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 minutes of the democracy. Right. The minutes of the pause is getting. The election. When? What? What? Yeah. The state of affairs. The election dates are tomorrow. Echo that sentiment. The election dates are tomorrow. May I? May one minute. One minute. I don't know that there is there is no yatra there is I just know that there is there are four luxury buses <laughs> what yatra in which in, in which in Cambridge Cambridge how can you do it chill out don't say you only it was getting you, too hot in india so he went to london and, black specs you are wearing no mr sabarwal i am a well wisher of your party black specs you are i believe there is no there is there is there is there is no there is no future of the congress party the till the vadra gandhi family is running okay now uh, mr sabarwal i'll take it to uh, reena and tohin reena when i every time i give you an opportunity to speak you say bjp is this bjp is bad modi is bad this bad there is no food there is no air there is pollution there is problem there is this whatever whatever now but what is your issue you have to understand you are up against a very 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 formidable opponent There has to be one issue rather than say they are bad. So I am giving you thirty seconds. The dates are tomorrow. Tomorrow are the dates. What is the one issue? Negative campaign won't help you. Think about it, Reena. 
it gets boring you know every time you say they are bad what is what is your issue what is your agenda why should people vote for you not because they are bad what do you bring to the table can i speak now or not can you hear me loud and clear yes loud and clear yes arnab we are the only party that says before every election agar humne kaam kiya ho to hame vote dena hum kabhi kisi aur cheez ke liye vote nahi mangte hain hum sirf bolte hain ki humne kaam kiya ho to hame vote dena main challenge karti hu bhartiya janata party ke pravakta aur jitne proxy pravakta hain pichle election mein jo unhone panch vaade kiye the 15 लाख सबके अकाउंट में आएंगे 2022 तक सबके पास मकान होगा 100 स्मार्ट सिटी होंगी रुपया डॉलर के बराबर हो जाएगा फलाना ढिमाका उनमें से एक कोई वादा पूरा किया हो इन्होंने तो आज ये बोले पहली बात दूसरी बात जो सबसे बड़ा इशू इस समय है जो मोदी जी ने पिछली बार चुनाव लड़ा था उन्होंने कहा था ना मैं खाऊंगा ना खाने दूंगा कल इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स का जो डेटा सामने आया उससे क्लियर हो गया है कि उनका नया नारा है हमें भी खिलाओ खुद भी खाओ सब मिलके बांट के खाएंगे जो टॉप थर्टी डोनर्स हैं उनमें से अर्ना बाईस डोनर्स ऐसे हैं जिनके घर ईडी और सीबीआई की रेड हुई तो जो सबसे बड़ा अचीवमेंट भारतीय जनता पार्टी का है पहले जमाने में होता था कि बाहुबली आके इलेक्शंस की रिगिंग करते थे बाहुबली की जरूरत नहीं है आज के जमाने में भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने ईडी और सीबीआई को बाहुबली बनाया है आप देखिए आई जस्ट वांट टू नेम टू थ्री ऑफ दीज इंस्टेंसेस। फ्यूचर गेमिंग कंपनी दो अप्रैल को उनके यहां रेट पड़ी सात अप्रैल को उन्होंने इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड्स खरीदे और फार्मा दस अगस्त को उनका एम अरेस्ट हुआ पंद्रह नवंबर को उन्होंने बॉन्ड्स खरीदे ऐसे कितने एग्जाम्पल्स हैं अर्नब आज रेड पड़ी पंद्रह दिन बाद बॉन्ड खरीदा तो इससे बड़ा इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज करप्शन भारत के इतिहास में नहीं हुआ आज देश के सामने सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा यह है कि आपने पूरे देश को लूट के सब कुछ कुछ ऐसे लोगों के नाम कर दिया जिससे आपको इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड मिले अर्नब यू रिमेंबर दट केस वेर देर वॉज दट टनल इन उत्तराखंड वेर सम ऑफ आर पीपल वर trapped inside the tunnel now it turns out the company that was making the tunnel navyug engineering unhone bhi inko electoral bonds ka chanda diya to jis kisi ne chanda diya us kisi ko inhone projects diye win. ye win. inka game chal raha hai pichle 10 saalon se to in uh, yeah. can i get it very clear uh, i want a response on this one minute one minute parent they uh, wanted yeah. to be so, honest so, I, so, yeah, yeah, i will so, respond so, on both so, हाईली वॉस्ड प्रोग्राम दे शुड अग्री ऑन योर चैनल टू नाइट दैट दे विल रिवील ऑल द नेम्स ऑफ दर डोनर्स दे डू दैट We are ready to reveal all the names of our donors. अगर चंदा लिया है तो खुल के आके सामने नाम बताओ ना किससे चंदा लिया है क्विट प्रो को अगर नहीं हुआ है तो डरते क्यों हो क्यों छुप रहे हो क्यों सुप्रीम कोर्ट को बार बार डांट लगानी पड़ रही है चंदा लिया है तो आप चल रहे हैं क्या चौड़ा करके बोलिए क्या चंदा लिया है ना आप भी जवाब देना है ये मनोलोग चलता रहेगा रीना रीना वन मिनट रीना यू मेड योर पॉइंट हियर बट कैन आई हैव एवरीवन ऑन सिंपल पॉइंट आई एम मेकिंग तो ही न I asked the one question, which both, is the most both. important the issue. I'll give you. I'll give you. Living up to no, our no, election no, promises no, no. and on no, 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 the electoral no, no, board. No, 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 no. I want the. I want the. The, only the first. The first I point. I. The first point. Elitists. The first point. I can predict the answer. The second answer. I'm more interested in. Because to him, truly, there is a moral no, argument I, being I, put I here. No, I mean, one minute, no, 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 but, 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 let me, let me, let me buttress, let me buttress the second question. Let me, let me buttress the second question. To him, to him, on the second question, you have moral obligation to explain a fundamental point. The companies who have contributed the largest amounts fall into two categories. 
One, those who've got huge government contracts, like Megha Engineering. They are giving more money than the Ambani's. Who is Megha Engineering? And why have they given 1,300 crores? No, no, 1,300 crores is a lot of money. Right? Now, Future Gaming, it's not exactly India's biggest infrastructure company. It's into lotteries and all. It's been under investigation of the ED. My question being to you that if you are accused, that how can you investigate or investigate on one hand, with one hand, and accept donations on the other, though it's not proven yet that the money came to you and you alone, I must say. But obviously, I, assumption well, being a large part me, of the money came to you. Have you, to no, no, have you, have you, have you, have you broken a, have you broken a, have you broken a moral rule it. somewhere? Have you broken a moral convention somewhere by doing so? No, no, there and are no moral rules. These are the issue. people who are accepting. Arnav, I think, you know, since both the opposition people have got adequate time, allow me, don't, you know, I will answer. I'm, I, you know that I don't run away from answering questions. But, you know, whether it was the election promises or this, what Reena Ji has said only confirms my belief that this is a party. Amadi Party is a party of educated illiterates. Just to briefly come to the election promises point, no, but no, you know, if you have read the election manifesto, at no point is the 15 lakh thing mentioned. What was mentioned was abrogation of Article 370, uh, our commitment towards the Ram Temple and CAA, all of these have been fulfilled. So I think Ahmadri Party needs to educate itself better. Now, when, when we come to electoral bonds, the first point is, you know, the opposition was gung-ho about the... They kept insinuating that two businessmen, according to Rahul Gandhi, were running the country. Now, both of those businessmen or both of the, these industrialists do not figure in the electoral bonds donor list. Now, the secondly, BJP as a party has received approximately 55% of uh, the total uh, amount. We have 55% MPs. But I think the bigger question is, how does TMC manage 14% of its funds with barely 23, 24 members of parliament? And finally, to the charge that you have put up, you have put up, you know, I think even you require a little more investigation before tossing this, this up. Companies can make, you know, companies can make donations even after a raid. But did the raid stop? I think that is the important question. The raid, probably in all cases, the raid went on, the investigation went on. You know, those people, uh, those parties who no, the raid did making, not go on. The raid those stopped. parties who have been used to the raid getting stopped. money in cash will never going. accept. The politics will of this never accept my my. Uh, uh, okay, then hear me. Can I be louder on this? Can I be louder on this? My counter first. I have a couple of counters here to the Amadmi Party respond, spokesperson. No, or before responding, you take my question, Reena. Can I respond? Aurobind, to please note the name. Note the name. Aurobindo Pharma. Is Aurobindo Pharma, does it seem familiar to you, Reena? Is it the same company whose director was Sharath Reddy, who has become approver in 2023 in Liquorgate? Would you like to comment on Aurobindo Pharma? Why don't you want to comment when I ask you yes, sir, more no, direct I can questions? Comment. Allow me the time. Aurobindo Pharma. Yes. So, Arna, yes. first of all, to respond to Tuhin Sina, the whole list is not out. The whole list is not out. There are many companies yeah. which appear to be shell companies. And I'll give one example. This company called Quick Supply. It gave 360 crores in donation. And the company only has 21 crores in profit. The directors of Quick Supply and the directors of many of the Reliance Group companies appear to be the same. The address appears to be the same where many of the Reliance Group companies are listed. So, Tuin Sina, there are many shell companies. The Pandora's box has not opened yet. Many more shells are going to come out. And in, we'll see in many cases that there are companies which are, are running into losses and are giving hundreds of crores to Bharatiya Janta Party. How do you explain that? A company that has no money, that has no profit, is giving donations to Bharatiya Janta Party. Arnab, to answer your question on Aurobindo Pharma, it's very interesting that you ask that question. This is one of the companies that has been listed in the so-called alleged liquor scam where not a single rupee has been recovered till now. Orbindo Pharma, the MD gets raided on 10th August 2022. They become approver in the, in the alleged liquor scam 
right after they give give donations in electoral bonds so it's almost like they are giving money to be allowed to, win. to become an approver in this case you you <coughs> see the chronology Sorry, in win. all of this uh, arnab yeah. you know they can be like hundreds of tv programs if arnab, you just go through the arnab, chronology the of case, all these the events case has not that been how is it that you are allowing all, companies you know i mean this is primarily the reason profit this is primarily the reason why can you know they are back to me पार्टी You know, all of you people, Mr. Sabarwal used to believe that Rafael will be the turning point of the last election. It was not. So all of you people are believing that electoral bonds are going to be the number one issue, when you very well know that you have skeletons to hide. Kevin Ter Food Park Infra Limited. I want me. I'll tell you because because all of you. I'll because if you're asking me the question, because all of you are beneficiaries. It's not only BJP. Somewhere we have to stop this. No, no, but you are you are the biggest beneficiary. Congress party got thousands of crores. What are you? Who are you preaching to? Rajat can tell you how much money you got. We are not having the money. Income tax has seized our accounts already. Can I come in? Income tax has already seized our accounts. Come in now. Mega Mega Group is the biggest group in Telangana. We have no money. The biggest Congress beneficiary so of some of the biggest irrigation projects in in <laughs> in Telangana. All those contracts went to Mega. Uh, A concerned person over there has been under investigation. Is still under investigation. A. Look at the second entity, Santiago Martin. Where is he active? He is active in Tamil Nadu. There are accusations in certain news articles that you know online uh, gaming was stopped so that they could aid Santiago Martin and his illicit operations in gambling in the state. Which states? Tamil Nadu, Kerala, West Bengal. these are the states where santiago martin has his operations in till now the data of who funded uh, 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 who, whose money did mega reach to whose money santiago martin's money reached to that data is still not out in all likelihood both these part, both these entities would have supported the congress parties in their could respective states a, of telangana as well as in, this, in tamil nadu so can sir, this become an election this, issue why is the data not out, out and why am i put out the data why the moral why the data when there are two prominent at least three prominent leaders are inside the jail right now on corruption charges so you cannot take a moral high ground madam today kartha has been arrested has to tomorrow be your leader might as well be arrested the corruption has and to go from political system there are considerable number of uh, uh, evidences on the table which is allowing the courts to keep uh, and and detain these people inside the inside the jail and they are not getting or bail there are some facts with the courts you or cannot or i wish i wish i wish uh, by the way or go i hope i hope i we wish yes, mamta banerjee speedy recovery though the mystery of who pushed her inside her own house yes. and who injured her should be the subject of a proper investigation i mean if these kind of things are I happening mean, inside mamta banerjee's house if somebody is pushing her attacking her beating her inside her house we are all very concerned yeah, yeah. how these things have yeah, happened it's a, you know? it's a very serious issue yeah. but anyway now now what is the singular I, issue I, in your view uh, in this election i personally would like to believe well arnab there is i would agree with you partially that it is about a referendum but the referendum is uh, not about mr modi but it is more about uh, whether and uh, how the people of india would like to you know stand by their democratic rights their freedom their gdp their employment schemes their economics and all the other factors also the vindictive attitude of the government uh, at various stages at various uh places they have been going in the name of you know transparency and uh, corruption free uh, state because we already saw that the uh, supreme court of india uh, went ahead and you know rejected and declared one of their transparency steps which is uh, the electoral bonds to be unconstitutional which must have been and which should be taken you know as a very important thing because supreme court feels that the government's actions uh, to make something transparent is unconstitutional because they did not find reasons with it and i believe uh, pm care funds will also be disclosed very soon 
And it, I hope that as soon the elections is declared, the PM care funds also comes to light because but, that but will Arko, help. But Arko, Arko, maybe you have forgotten. Arko, that, uh, Arko, the 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 the, the battle the battle is between the BJP and the opposition parties. The way some of you people are talking, you are trying to make it look like the election battle is between the BJP or the government and uh, the Supreme Court. It's not. The Supreme Court is not the opposition and will never be. Well, thank you, you, Arnab, people, thank you, you, Arnab, you people. You, are, you have brought the thing. If, if, now if, the situation uh, is as the political parties if, are if, being if, constantly vindicated by the government, it is the Supreme Court which needs to come forward and. No, but have opposition election, parties. Which, the Supreme uh, Court has said it. No, 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 no. This is too much. You are expecting the Supreme Court to perform a political role. How can you talk like that? How can you try and give a quasi political function to the Supreme Court? These no, matters no, have been no, brought before the Supreme Court earlier, and they have said no. Playing the Tomorrow you'll want the Supreme Court to get into policy issues. Tomorrow you'll get the Supreme Court to decide the budget of the country. Tomorrow you'll ask the Supreme Court to decide the foreign policy of the country. The I think you people are crossing the line. You shouldn't do that. This is going to become extremely controversial. The, uh, one political party is in power. Mr. Samaral, don't do that. interfering. Every oh, time drawing the Supreme Court into is the Supreme Court cannot perform the role of a political party and never will. Electoral bonds, bonds to be in don't party. debate. The Supreme Court Supreme has to come Court, up. You people are constantly giving a quasi political function to the Supreme Court because, 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 because you cannot because you cannot fight your political battles. Why, they why, 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 the, the, why did the doing. Supreme Court invite uh, in the justice. electoral bond? Supreme Court, Supreme the Court is not a political party. They are getting into and why why political ground if that does. Supreme Court once again Wait, please, why to why come forward and speak on the PM care funds. You people are saying it's a political party. Because you people are offended from the Supreme Court. Because it has exposed Mr. Bodhi. Mr. Bodhi, please, must preside. He should have courage. And he must preside. He must preside. Yeah, come on, do it. The Supreme Court has always stood already at any the fag end of the government. debate since the debate was about the 2024 agenda let me you know come back to it for the next 30 seconds if you allow me you know the fault lines and the battle lines have never been clearer have never been more stark this is a fight between those who want Vixit Bharat and those who want balkanization of Bharat DMK has been calling for balkanization of Bharat and not Congress Party, not Amadi Party, has had the you courage to condemn that. People, this, is Bodhi a guarantee, this is Mr. a battle Bodhi between money. those who have a vision Mr. Bodhi for the has next the money. 20 years. Are and those who don't have for the next 20 years. That's how we will be able to do this. That's how we will be able to do this. That's how we will be able to do this. That's how we will be able to do this. 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 We will be country He's and ladies and gentlemen on the other side, K. Kavita has been arrested. KTR's daughter, big political story. Big political story. K. Kavita, uh, KTR's daughter been arrested. Is now is it now moving uh, closer towards the Ahmadmi party? Huge political scandal debate. And that's coming up in a few minutes. It's a hot debate tonight.